So let's take a look at the following two reactions that allow us a way to synthesize to create our amino acids. And let's begin with the alkylation of the alpha halo acid. So what exactly is an alpha halo acid? Well, it's basically a carboxylic acid. So we have the carboxylic acid group and we have a halogen attached to the alpha carbon of this group, to this carbon here. We also have some type of side chain, some type of R group. Now, if we take this alpha halo acid and we mix it in excess ammonia, we produce this molecule, the alpha alpha amino acid and notice all we did is basically replace our halogen group this X with our amino group and we also deprotonated this H and produce this carboxylate ion. Now this reaction is an example of a nucleophilic reaction, a nucleophilic substitution in which this ammonia acts as the nucleophile replacing and, and displacing this halogen X. So we produce this molecule that contains this amino group. Now the reason that we have to use excess amounts of ammonia is to basically shift the equilibrium to the product side because if we have excess ammonia and ammonia is our reactant by Le Chatelier's principle that will shift our reaction towards the alpha amino acid side. Now what exactly is the reaction mechanism and is this the final product under basic conditions? So let's take a look at our reaction mechanism. So in step one we have the nucleophilic reaction taking place. The ammonia will act as a nucleophile and create a bond between the nitrogen and our carbon attacking from the back side displacing this leaving group our halogen. So let's suppose that the R group is a simple H atom and the halogen is a bromide, a bromide atom. So basically we displace this bond, we create this bromine ion, bromide ion, and we also form a bond between the nitrogen and the carbon and so we add our ammonium group. So we have the ammonium group that contains the positive charge on the nitrogen and we have this carboxylic acid group. And as soon as we displace this bromine, the bromine of base will basically take away the H forming this molecule our alpha amino acid that contains our ammonium as well as this carboxylate ion. We also form this HBr. Now notice because we are under basic conditions this might not be the final product. Because we have excess ammonia the ammonia will basically deprotonate this ammonium to form this product in which we have no charge on the nitrogen. We have have the primary uh, amine, we have this molecule that contains our negative charge, our carboxylate ion, and we have in close proximity the ammonium that will interact with this negative charge to basically form an ionic bond. Now, this is one way in which we can form the alpha amino acid. Another way to form amino acids is via a reaction known as Gabriel synthesis or Gabriel malonic ester synthesis. Now, we're not going to discuss the reaction mechanism. We'll simply look at the steps. In the next lecture, we're going to look at the reaction mechanism in detail for the Gabriel malonic ester synthesis. So in the first step, we basically take our bromo malonic ester and we mix it with potassium thalamide. So this is our potassium thalamide. As we'll see in the next lecture, it will basically act as a nucleophile, displacing this bromide and attaching itself onto this carbon. And we're going to form the following intermediate. Now intermediate, this intermediate will then react with the base. Let's suppose this base 
to produce this intermediate end in the final several steps. If we mix it in step one with our sodium hydroxide in the presence of water and then in step two with our acid, let's say HCl, we produce the final product, will form the phthalic acid, carbon dioxide. So basically we're going to get a decarboxylation reaction and we're also going to form our amino acid. In this case, we're going to form our methionine. So we see that there are two different ways in which we can form amino acid. One is the alkylation of alpha haloacid and the second one is the Gabriel malonic ester synthesis. Now there's actually a third way but we're going to discuss that in a future lecture. In the next lecture we're going to discuss the details of the reaction mechanism of the Gabriel malonic ester synthesis.